Welcome everyone to our virtual open day live session. Today we're going to show you everything we can about the city of Maastricht, the University of Maastricht and of course our problem based learning teaching method. But first a little bit about Maastricht itself. The city of Maastricht is located at the most southern point of the Netherlands, close to the border with Germany and Belgium. It's the oldest city in the Netherlands, approximately two and a half thousand years old and is very well known for its 1992 Maastricht Treaty. We are the most international university of the Netherlands and are ranked 14th worldwide in internationality. We have 250 exchange uh, possibilities worldwide and most of our education is exclusively in English. We are a student-oriented university and are most well known for our problem-based learning teaching method. As I mentioned before, Maastricht University is the most international university in the Netherlands. We have 53% of our students joining us from abroad and 40% of our staff coming from abroad as well. We represent 120 plus nationalities and have more than 250 partnerships with other universities worldwide, which allow you to do your internship or your exchange all over the world. Also our courses and content are often being taught in an international perspective, to not only teach you the content, but also learn you how to see things from a different perspective. Since most of our bachelor programs offer you to go abroad in your third year, I also took my opportunity and went to Macau, China. Somewhere in your third year, you often have the opportunity to go abroad and join one of our 250 partner universities worldwide. During this five, six month per time, you don't have any courses or obligations in Maastricht, you just have to get your credits abroad. Looking at the rankings of Maastricht University, we are doing extremely well, taking into account that we are such a young university. In the 50 under 50, which means the 50 top universities under 50 years old, we are ranking currently 5th in the QS rankings and 14th worldwide in how international we are. Often for the Dutch national rankings, we have top ranked programs in European studies, data science and much, much more. Currently, the University of Maastricht offers 15 bachelor programs of a duration of 3 years spread out over 6 different faculties. The School of Business and Economics offers international business, economics and business economics, whereas our Faculty of Law offers our European Law School. The Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences has our European Studies course, Arts and Culture and Digital Society. The Faculty of Health, Medicine and Life Sciences offers us Biomedical Sciences, European Public Health and our International Track in Medicine. We also have the Faculty of Psychology and Neuroscience, which offers our English Track in Psychology. And finally, we have our Faculty of Science and Engineering, which offers our Data Science and Knowledge Engineering program, University College Maastricht, University College Venlo, and our Maastricht Science program. Maastricht University uses the problem-based learning teaching method, which is interactive, self-directed, engaging, and relevant. I'll now explain you how PBL works. PBL uses a case-by-case -case scenario. At the beginning of your course, you get a course book where all your cases are listed. Take, for example, case one. Your first case is going to be a page, a page and a half of information, which you read as a group. The first thing you do is to make sure that everybody in the group understands all the information given. Do you understand every word? Does your neighbor understand every word in it? After that, you're holding a brainstorm. What do we already know? What information is written in this case? Which problems are written down? After you have done that and you've finished your brainstorm, you cluster these together. Problem one, problem two, problem three, what are the issues that are coming up? After you have clustered this, you make learning goals. Learning goals are basically just the questions, but these questions come from the group. So you and your peers are responsible for analyzing the text and thus creating the questions that need to be answered. You're also gonna have mandatory readings. However, because you as a group set forward the questions that need to be answered, there's a good chance that some of your questions are not in the mandatory readings. For this, for three years straight, you also have to conduct your own research. After you've done your self-study, you come back to the class and you start answering the questions. What do we know? What is my answer? What is your answer? And because you have created, uh, you have done your own research, you're also responsible for debating here. I have answer A to a question. My neighbor has answer B. Who is right? Who is wrong? Did I make a mistake? Did she make a mistake? Due to this interactiveness of the material and due to the debating, you're far more interactive with all the materials. There's a tutor there who makes sure that you're staying on the right track, that the right questions are being asked and that you're not spending too much time on the wrong thing. 
So why is this important? Because you're not only learning content, you're also practicing and training your soft skills. I like critical thinking. Due to your own research and because of the different answers that you're giving, you have to also be critical about what your neighbor is saying. Is she correct? Is he correct? Where does his or her information come from? How is their logic? You can detect each other on this, and this requires a lot of creative thinking. Creativity. Every week, one person is responsible for chairing the tutorial. If you're chairing, bring other interactive materials, make a Kahoot game, bring YouTube, anything you want. Just make sure that you're having an interactive session. Communication. You're not only telling each other your point of view, you're debating it, you're actively engaged with it, thus practicing your communication skills. And last but not least, collaboration, teamwork. Not only through team activities or like presentations that you have to make, but also by uh, having small skilled classes with maximum of 15 people, you're always interactive and collaborating to make sure that at the end of the lesson, everybody understands it. When it comes to student life, we have a general introduction week for all new students in Maastricht. This is called the Income Week. During this week, you and all other national or international students are being introduced to the city. After this one week, we also have the faculty introduction days. This can either be one or two days, or three or four, depending on which faculty you're at and which program you're following. During these days, you get an in-depth introduction into your faculty, the program, the people in your cohort, and what to expect from PBL in your program. Maastricht is known for its cafe culture. That means that we don't have an going out part as such as clubbing, with more bar-based and more relaxed, in my personal opinion. We have a lot of study associations and student associations which organize a lot of activities, recreational activities, sport clubs, so there's more than enough for you to do whatever you want. We also have the Student Sports Center, UM Sports, which is located on the east side of the river. Here you can, for a low monthly uh, amount or an annual base, sport as much as you want. Also, because we're centrally located in Europe, you have very good travel opportunities to both Germany, Belgium or even further, with Frankfurt, Belgium and Amsterdam being close by. If you have any more questions, I invite you to ask all of these in our upcoming live sessions. Thank you for joining. No, See you soon. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome today's, to today's live stream uh, from Maastricht University, the virtual open day. Uh, I'm Sophia. I will be one of your co-hosts today for uh, the live stream. Uh, I'm joined here with two of my co-hosts, uh, fellow students from Maastricht University, and we're here to uh, answer all of your questions uh, about the bachelor programs in Maastricht and what it's like to study here. Uh, so again, I'm Sophia. I'm a second year uh, student at U University College Maastricht. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Hello, I'm Andrea. I'm third year bachelor student. I'm currently studying European law and Dutch law. Hi, I'm Dimitri. I'm a second year European public health student studying at the Faculty of Health, uh, Medicine and Life Science on the other side of the river. Cool. Uh, so just to start it off, uh, what is something special about studying at Maastricht University? I would say internationality and diversity. For example, in my study in European law school, we have like 10 different nationalities in, in one classroom and it's really young city. Uh, yeah, Maastricht is really young and it's a student city, so it's very energetic, I would say. So, yes, international and diversity is one of our characteristics. Yeah. I mean, there's also like another cool thing, which is the sort of whole PBL system that they have in mm -hmm. place. And we'll touch a bit upon that a bit later. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. And sort of on the same note, there's three new bachelor programs that UHAM has introduced. There's the Global Studies, there's also the Digitalization in Society, as well as the Business and Engineering. And all of these are very relevant in multidisciplinary topics. So uh, check out the website for that. All right, great. And uh, can you guys tell me maybe why you chose Maastricht University as just a quick quick introduction again. Uh, it was uh, for me it was because of the unique program because I am studying uh, half European law and half Dutch law. Somehow it's uh, interesting. Well, I want to become a lawyer and it's always nice to know uh, European law beside of the national law. That's why I actually chose Maastricht University. Yeah. Well, personally for me, I, I was growing up in Africa and it was quite a um, like whenever my parents would be talking to other parents about like universities and stuff like that, Maastricht University always came up as this one university that was in the Netherlands um, that had a program that was taught in English and so you didn't have to like 
break the bank to go there because mm -hmm. like some of my friends used, would go to the U.S. Would, you know, which is a bit expensive, but here in the Netherlands it's much more affordable. Uh, and also the pro programs here are, are well well taught, and I yeah. like the whole PBL system. Definitely, yeah. Uh, that's also one reason I came to Maastricht uh, specifically for the university college program here in Maastricht. Mm -hmm. It has an open curriculum. It's very international, uh, and that's something that I really really wanted in my university life. Uh, because I lived in, I've lived in the Netherlands my whole life, but I did go to an international school. I'm half Belgian, half American, so I really wanted to keep that international identity uh, alive. Um, yeah, it's actually pretty interesting in my study. There are not only European students, and also there are a lot of non-EU uh, students mm -hmm. who actually study European law. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, and one thing I think uh, one thing to mention is that the academic period we have like six periods instead of uh, one or two semesters. We have uh, two, uh, which is period three and six is short as one month. And yeah, the others are like, uh, it takes like nine weeks or something. So yeah, we separate with periods. Yeah, so yeah, there's there's yeah. blocks of eight weeks, uh, like, and then an exam week. Yeah, uh, yeah at UCM actually we have, um, our exam week is one week earlier and we have a reflection week. So oh. a week of holiday after. That's, so that's a nice bonus for uh, university yeah. college students. We don't students. have that in local. No, no unfortunately. Very jealous. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, uh, yeah, so as we mentioned before, this PBL, uh, you know, problem-based learning method we have in Maastricht. Uh, do you guys have positive experiences? I know we'll, we'll dive into this a little bit deeper later, but can you tell me a few things about how that works in the classroom? Like, I think in general, what's really nice about PBL is that the whole idea is it's like student-led discussion. Mm -hmm. And so essentially, like, if everyone is prepared for the tutorial, uh, everyone contributes to it, you come out of it learning much more than you would, let's say, I haven't gone to a lecture because people really get to bring mm -hmm. their background into it. They get mm -hmm. to bring, um, they get to look at extra sources, whatever they want. Uh, every, all these ideas are welcome in the classroom. So I think it's, it's really unique. Um, and it gives you like a, a certain perspective on, let's say, issues and cases, as we call them here. Definitely, yeah, I agree. Um, it's really interesting because Maastricht is so international to kind of dive into those PBL sessions and um, hear from people with different values, different, you know, cultural experiences, things like that. I think that's really interesting. I'm sure in law it's like that as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We normally get like uh, cases uh, can be real life based and. Yeah, basically you have to go home, you, you solve uh, the cases and you come to classes and we discuss uh, yeah, the cases. Yeah, definitely for law it, it should be like that because the input of the students is really important. And mm -hmm. yeah, in the end, the lawyers, we, we should know how to speak, so I guess it makes right. sense for us. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Uh, yeah, so to introduce PBL a little bit further, we have a quick uh, video we'd like to show. Um, and that will just give you, provide you some, uh, with some more information about PBL and how it, how it works in the classroom. Uh, so here it is. Problem-based learning, or PBL. What does that mean exactly? Three of my fellow students and I will show you around. Every week, we analyze a different case or issue together. We discuss the case and everyone can contribute different perspectives to the group discussion. If we get stuck, our tutor helps us out and suggests what we could do next. I prefer going to the library to prepare. Here, I can focus and I have quick access to books or journals that help me understand the case. Today, I can also train my stitching skills in the skills lab where you can immediately put into practice what you've learned. After a day like this, I like going to the gym to clear my head and get ready for the next day. At UM, you meet people from all around the world. Hello, guys. Some of them are doing their change semester here, and they often say that PBL helps them learn and retain things very easily. I can understand why. It's a very active way of learning because you have to bring your own perspective to real life cases. You have a lot of freedom to manage your time, your studies, your hobbies and your work. Of course, that also means a lot of responsibility. Right now, for example, I'm arranging my exchange semester in Madrid. How cool is that? In this group session, we're the managers who have to allocate the resources of a real company. 
This is how we put into practice what we learned this morning. Studying here means being proactive and learning to plan well. Prioritizing and performing well under stress are great skills that help you develop as a person. But now it's time to grab a coffee at the Student Service Center. Right now we're at the Brightlands Chemlock campus. Here we can apply knowledge from lectures and tutorials in a practical setting. This helps us understand what we have learned and further develop our lab skills. Today we're determining the amounts of cholesterol in various products. What I really like is the project periods at the end of each semester, where we complete a full research project. That includes planning, collecting data, analyzing and presenting the findings. That way we learn how research works and we're able to see what it's like to be a real scientist. After practicals, I have to write a lab report that also helps me process everything I have learned today. UM has a lot of learning spaces where you can work on your own or with other students. This evening, I'm meeting my friends for a movie night organized by the MSP Study Association. If you study law, you have to read quite a lot. Not all information is relevant, so you learn how to easily find the information you need to solve your case. In the afternoon, I have to give a presentation, so I like to practice it with a fellow student. Later today, a lawyer is giving a lecture. This will help us better understand the case we're working on. Speaking in front of a group is quite exciting the first time around, but you get to use to it quickly. And having to present helps you also to adopt knowledge better. What I like the most is that we sometimes get to enter a plea in front of a real judge. These mood courts are really exciting. Now it's time for drinks with friends. <laughs> Studying is important, but so is relaxing once in a while. Yeah, so I hope that video was uh, informing regarding PBL. Um, if you have any more questions along, uh, like while we are discussing, please uh, put it up in our, our like in the comments. Uh, we have people uh, in the other room uh, as little chatbots uh, answering your questions. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions, please write them, and we'll try to answer as many as we can. Um, so this section is about PBL. Um, can you tell me, Andrea, about positive experience you've had in the classroom in your tutorial group with PBL? Yeah, um, I would say it's, uh, the discussion can be really um, heated because I think uh, most of the law students, we are very talkative, I would say. And I really enjoy discussions and, and pleading and stuff. And the classroom can actually turn into a whole uh, pleading session. Mm. And also it's really interesting because uh, people uh, are from really, uh, they have really different backgrounds and then they kind of um, input different perspectives. And then, yeah, also in law, you can come up with a lot of solutions to the cases. And also uh, in cases, you also have to negotiate a lot in legal cases. So PBL uh, can be really interesting uh, in that case. And for example, I, well, a little bit similar to PBL, I have experience in moot court, which is a pleading competition. I think a PBL is really helpful, those kind of competition. Well, moot court is basically like, um, yeah, you practice, well, you pretend that you're, you're a lawyer, but you do pleading in front of the actual judges. And we have two beautiful moot court rooms in the law faculty. It's, it's magnificent. Uh, yeah, there we also have uh, moot court courses. Uh, yeah, we practice how to plead and how to defend and stuff like that. So I think, yeah, in the end, PBL really helps you to to speak better, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also I saw some shy students at first when, when they're a bit introverted or something and they are reluctant to, to speak. And as time goes, they, they actually learn how to, how to talk better, how to present the case better. So yeah, so it, it, it has really a positive outcome, okay. I'd say. 
What about you at the other faculty? How does that work there? At the other faculty? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, here in uh, the European Public Health Bachelors, what we often see is uh, in the tutorials that, so we call them tutorials, the PBL sessions where we're interacting as a class, um, is that they're very useful. And as I said, we bring a lot of perspectives into it. Uh, we're bringing in our background, but also maybe some extra things we're interested in. And there's this whole idea of, let's say, like people who uh, contribute uh, during the classes. And so you have your opportunity to s sort of strengthen your knowledge. Personally, I find myself that like when I'm revising, it helps a lot when I'm actually like speaking and I'm trying to explain concepts because mm -hmm. it makes it more concrete. It's not like when you're reading and then, you know, OK, you read it, but you, you, you might not be able to say what's happening. Because when I feel mm -hmm. that you're speaking it, you, you have to know a bit what you're talking about. Exactly. Um, and so that's one thing that I really enjoy about PBL. Another really important thing is um, because uh, in our bachelors, sometimes we do touch on the, upon biology, let's say. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we um, make like little concept maps and diagrams uh, to illustrate certain like biological concepts mm -hmm. and go in depth in that. So I think it's really cool. It's a bit like a little bit of a creative classroom. Oh. Um, and I find it to be a very welcoming, very open environment. Um, I mean, people are, are encouraged to speak, um, speak of what's on their mind course relating to the topic but just in general it's really nice you make some friends and often in the first uh, tutorial groups people usually like uh, that's their friends for a little bit of time right. yeah uh, I know I know what you mean because uh, when I'm in a PBL session for example like I find it super helpful for me to already prepare for my tutorial and in some way prepare for my exam already mm -hmm. because you're you're teaching yourself you're teaching other people you ex like I like to think that when I'm fully able to explain a concept to someone that I will know, like it will stick with me, you know, mm -hmm. that then I know how it works. Um, and I think it's it's helpful for students then say they don't come as prepared as they would li have liked to, then they're explained things and, and uh, kind of things are, are explained well by other students. Um, and of course, there's a tutor involved. Um, so in case your discussion is kind of going off track or uh, some things are not going into depth enough, the tutor will kind of steer you on the right track. Um, let's hop over to some questions that you guys have been asking. Uh, I see a question here, at UCM are classes PBL based or just lecture based? So obviously being UCM I'll answer this one. Um, everything uh, at Maastricht University is PBL, so also at the University College. Um, uh, there are lectures as well. Um, but that varies per class, um, and they're sometimes mandatory, sometimes not. Um, another thing is that uh, at UCM, the courses, because of the, the open curriculum, you are able to choose which courses you'd like to take, which is uh, different to other bachelors uh, at Maastricht. Mm -hmm. um, and what I like about this is that means that all the students in your tutorial are very motivated and interested about the topic, about the course that you're taking. Um, and there's first, second, and third years mixed mixed in one. So um, people who do not have experience with PBL uh, are in PBL sessions with third years and second years, people who know what's going on. And um, last year, in my first year, I felt immediately kind of welcomed into the PBL system. Um, I really like it because, like I said, I feel like I can easily communicate and explain concepts to other people, which helps me prepare. Uh, for exams and helps me kind of build knowledge on the subject. Yeah, um, for sure, it's it's really good for uh, procrastinating <laughs> students. <laughs> <laughs> then you are kind of obliged to to come prepared, exactly, and then you yeah. do the work already from the week first. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah, it's really helpful. Sure. Let's say you know for UCM, like, uh, isn't it really difficult for first students then um, participate in mm. classes with third? year students can be really difficult courses no yeah you may think so but the 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 way that you see uh, UCM works you have various uh, courses that are more advanced than others okay. um, and it kind of works on a prerequisite basis so your first year you take um, kind of I intro level courses to get okay. you um, you know introduced to the topic and see if that's something you'd like to put on your curriculum and study further um, but this is also, uh, so that those classes are usually first year, second years, people still trying to like look at what they want to study. Um, but as you go into your second and third year, um, it does become more advanced. Um, mm -hmm. But what is really interesting is you have people from all sorts of different uh, like academic disciplines, interests. Um, and so you have people who are more advanced in one topic than the other or um, are studying uh, just one thing. Um, mm -hmm. 
and is com combining it with another topic, which are kind of um, someone's, someone does not study those. So you get lots of more information from more people, uh, which I really appreciate at UCM. Um, shall we maybe answer another question? Um, let's see. I think maybe like the first one, uh, it says, is life in Maastricht expensive? Yeah. Um, so that's a pretty broad question. Um, but from my perspective, let me try to answer that. Uh, I'm an athlete here, so my biggest expense here is food. And I can assure you that food in Maastricht isn't too expensive. There are yeah. Yeah, lots of students still. And students' true. restaurants, you know, that offer a really reasonable price. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, like, also in general, like, to find food, it's not that difficult. There's, like, a lot of supermarkets. There's some pretty, like cheap supermarkets like you know you have your like Lidl and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, but you have a wide range of like grocery stores and stuff like that and then also because it's a, a bit of a student city there's a lot of yeah. establishments that cater to that there's this one place that does this 20 year old deal for two people and you you just get boxes of food it's amazing <laughs> um, yeah so yeah L plenty of options definitely and we'll okay. definitely touch up uh, more on this topic uh, later yeah. um i see another question here uh, if english is my mother tongue is it difficult to adapt to uh, the student life in uh, in maastricht uh, specifically in the classroom maybe um i don't have much experience with this uh, but if well, someone else can adapt on uh, maybe I, I can say something about this because mm. English is not my mother tongue as well. I live on the countryside. Uh, well, personally, I didn't really have difficulties uh, to adapt to other students, I guess. But it can be challenging, yeah, in regard to legal words. But then, yeah, if you take the uh, introductory courses, then you will, yeah, you will know what kind of legal words you need to know. So I guess, yeah, your English also, yeah, improve yeah. as time goes and. Yeah, definitely. It was not really a, a big challenge here. Mm -hmm. say so. uh, at UCM specifically, we have um, uh, kind of introductory days and and skills that uh, the first years take uh, throughout the year, which focus on writing and reading and um, kind of how to set up a research paper, mm -hmm. uh, how to conduct research uh, itself. Yeah. Uh, and I think other bachelor programs have this as well, kind of those skills, introductory yeah, levels. Because definitely. of course, um, ev all students at Maastricht come in from, from you know, from, from, yeah, from international countries. Yeah. And everyone has different school education systems, you know, different high school background. Uh, everyone's reading and writing is at, at a different level. Mm -hmm. So I think Maastricht University uh, ensures that those kind of, uh, that everyone comes to the same level. Um, yeah, if you if you can speak English and if you, if you have like certain level, then we'll be all right. We mm -hmm. also have skill, uh, skills courses. You learn how to yeah. write and how mm -hmm. to do a good footnote and how to write professionally. You learn it at the university. So English was yeah really not the problem. Yeah, so. and especially incorporating this uh, this with PBL, uh, of course. When you are in the tutorial group, it is up to you how much you want to participate, how much mm. you want to improve, how much you want to, yeah. you know, contribute to the session. Yeah, it's um, a good point. Your input is also really exactly. important. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> let's answer another question. Do you guys want to choose one? Sure. Um, there's one question which asks, how is life in Maastricht slash the Netherlands if you do not speak Dutch? So I'm very qualified to answer this question, you <laughs> see, because both these people here uh, speak Dutch. Um, I myself do not. Uh, however, the the thing about living in the Netherlands is that basically, like, almost everyone speaks English. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but a large portion of people mm. speak English, and you can totally get by. Of course, it's very encouraged to learn the language Dutch. I'd say that the biggest, um, not yeah, one obstacle to consider is that a lot of jobs, which we will touch upon later, often require you to speak Dutch. But beyond that. It's pretty manageable. I think I know a good chunk of students who just, um, yeah, they, they don't learn Dutch, they just speak English. Mm, and yeah, they live yeah. Their life. for sure. People here, they speak English, like all of them, mm. even if you speak Dutch. I mean, people just, I don't know, I think people really like speaking English. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, you won't have any problem uh, with not knowing Dutch. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, you could get by easily um, also for working and, you know, meeting new people. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Maastricht is an international city, loads of <laughs> students, but also lots of expat. I mean, we have yeah. um, like we have an international school here uh, in the neighborhood and um, yeah, plenty of English speaking people. Um, and of course, all Dutch people speak English uh, yeah. just fine. So 
definitely mm -hmm. uh, is not a problem. And it's again up to you if you want to immerse yourself in the in the like culture, in the lang learn the language, things like that. Um, I know Maastricht University does offer um, like a in intro yeah. to Dutch course mm -hmm. uh, to start out if you want, free of charge if you yeah. are enrolled at the university. Mm -hmm. So that again is a great opportunity um, to immerse yourself into the Dutch culture in Maastricht. Yeah. Um, and actually my housemate, uh, she is Brazilian and she's lived here for about four or five years now and she's learning Dutch now as well and she actually wants to become a, a Dutch citizen. So she's also working uh, for that, kind of immersing herself in the culture. Um, yeah, shall we answer another question maybe? Hmm. Is there a February intake for the programs or only in September? Um, Maastricht does have two intakes in September and February. Um, but it really depends on the programs, I think. For example, in law faculty, we have like uh, European Law School and, and Dutch Law, and uh, like Rechtsgeleerdheid and Fiscalrecht. But for those, yeah, you, the intakes are only for, uh, yeah, from September. Okay. I don't know, maybe exchange program? They, yeah, it's open, uh, yeah, in February, mm -hmm. but. Definitely. Yeah, also in September, I think. Right. Yeah. Really? Uh, both, yeah, both, uh, both times, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's possible, but it really depends on the programs, I would yeah, say. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if you guys have any um, kind of specific questions about a program, I would definitely encourage you to look mm -hmm. on the website. Um, I assume most of the information regarding intake and tuition and all of those things are there. Um, and if you have any other questions that were not answered on the website, I would definitely mm -hmm. maybe send an email to study at maastrichtuniversity.nl. Uh, um, um, let's see, um, so obviously I study at UCM um, and at UCM we do have um, kind of an admissions procedure where you have to apply, send a motiv motivation letter, um, things like this. Uh, so today we have a special guest uh, with us today. Um, uh, this is Sumona from the um, SBE admissions officer office and she is uh, here to uh, have us, you know, answer some questions questions about the admission process um, and we also just want to see what it's like um, at the in the admissions office what does an admission officer do I'm very well, curious that is a very good question what do we do well I start my mornings with a cup of tea and then I look at all the applications that come in and then we start processing uh, the applications informing students um, we try to make the information as clear as possible so that is also uh, what I do as a coordinator so before the intake starts on mm -hmm. the 1st of October, StudiLink opens for the next uh, intake. We make sure that the web texts are available, that people know what they need to do, and that they know where to turn to if uh, anything uh, mm -hmm. is not clear or is missing, or if they just have a question about their specific uh, situation. Okay. Well, I actually have a good question uh, for the audience. We can uh, all guess like how, how many emails does Simone get per day? You can tell uh, tell us the answers at the end of the session. Yes. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you have a guess as to how many emails uh, the admissions office gets per mm -hmm. day, uh, please uh, like write it down in the comments, and we can see whose answer is correct later. Yeah. Um, so you told us a little bit about your daily schedule. Uh, what should uh, some students keep in mind when uh, sending you an email or trying to contact you? Well, um, if you're trying to apply for the upcoming mm -hmm. intake, um, uh, we uh, unfortunately still have some delays due to the cyber attack. Mm -hmm. So if you think, okay, I really have a very urgent question, then just call us. We're also available uh, via telephone. Um, just try to make your application as complete as possible from the get-go. So the information should be available on the website. But if it's not, then you'll get the chance from us to still uh, to still submit the documents a bit later on. Obviously, the application procedures are not all the same. So at, at the School of Business and Economics, we have one numerous fixes program, uh, as is the case for medicine, also in psychology. Right. Uh, we have a selective program, which is economics and business economics. But I think at UCM, for example, they also have selective programs. So the procedures can really differ. There are also programs that mm -hmm. only have a matching procedure, where there's no real selection so if you meet the admission criteria you can start the program uh, and we will send out the matching or in Dutch studiekeuze check so that you can still check whether this is the right program mm -hmm. for you 
Um, so we have a lot of different procedures uh, for different target groups. Um, so just read the information which is available mm -hmm. on the website for your program or maybe your programs if you're applying for more than mm -hmm. one program. And if you have questions, just also send a message to study at maastrichtuniversity.nl or uh, contact the faculty contact persons. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question. What are the most uh, common questions? Uh, students. Is my file complete? Uh, how long okay. will it take until I get an answer? Um, uh, for uh, um, why is my file not complete or why mm -hmm. is this document not as it should be? Mm -hmm. uh, so really very practical questions yeah. about the documents we require or whether they meet the admission requirements uh, regarding uh, high school degree level and for SBE, mm -hmm. the mathematics level. Mm -hmm. But I think the same goes for business engineering and maybe also programs at uh, the faculty of uh, FHML. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know what I mean by all. Yeah. But, uh, so those questions. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. And if it's really in a busy period, how long are students are expected to wait? Well, I would exp well, I would love to be able to say, okay, within two days we can answer a question. But unfortunately, at the moment, that is not the case. What we try to do is prioritize. So if you have to choose between answering an email about whether or not the file is complete or processing applications, then we're always going to try to process the applications as soon as possible so mm -hmm. that we can inform those students that their file is complete. Um, yeah, at the moment we are even two weeks at SBE. We try to answer as soon as possible, but some emails are already waiting for a few weeks. But then we'll inform them as soon as possible mm -hmm. of the status of the application. And I'm curious, um, on, on your end, you know, behind the scenes, what is the biggest difference between the September and February intake for you? Well, for the bachelors, we do not have a uh, February intake. We do mm -hmm. have that for the masters mm -hmm. uh, at SBE. We, have, we also have the masters programs at the admissions office. Um, the February intake is a lot calmer than the September intake because in September all programs start. Right. So now we're really at the, the busiest mm -hmm. time uh, mm -hmm. of the year since... We have to have a ranking ready by the 15th of April, and we have our master's applications. Okay. Uh, so we're trying to prioritize everything. We get more staff in that period, mm. so we have to train uh, that staff. Uh, and normally that, that goes without a hitch. So uh, we're, uh, we're then prepared for what's coming. And we're still prepared now, uh, just a bit behind, but uh, that's due to a small thing called <laughs> the cyber hack. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, do you have any questions, maybe, uh, um, Simona? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious, in, in, the, like, in, the, in the workplace, let's say, yeah. what's the most challenging part of being um, an admissions officer? Mm. Um, I think explaining the rules as clearly as possible. Uh, mm. Also, if that is not what the, the applicant or the parent who calls wants to hear, uh, still explaining why we have the rules and that it's not because we want to uh, be a hassle or that it is because we want to st have people start the program when it is the program for them. So when they are suited, when they are well prepared to start the program and to also be able to finish it successfully, um, mm -hmm. for them to make the right choice in program and also to have the right background to yeah. be able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so trying to explain that to uh, people who... Uh, who do not meet the admission requirements, for example, that is challenging. Yeah. Okay. And I see here we have a, a quick yeah. question from uh, someone in the audience. Uh, are interviews a part of the admission process? Not at SBE, uh, but mm -hmm. I know that at other faculties they can be. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a so-called, well, it used to be a paper uh, version, now it's an online, mm -hmm. but we have documents that we uh, check. We have an international classroom essay and that replaces uh, the, the interviews. Maybe. Okay, That's interesting. Uh, yeah, at, at UCM we do have interviews, and I'm not sure about law and uh, at F FHML. I think with an FHM, I think medicine is one of mm -hmm. those programs yeah. 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 where there is like a very special day. I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have a different. So they also have a numerous fixes program, yeah. and they there's this first I think one selection based on portfolio, and then I believe the interviews, and then you go mm -hmm. on into the, the yeah. rest of the process. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, in law we I think law is uh, is a public sector, so we don't have numerous fixes and we don't have interviews and stuff. No. No, not that I know. No, yeah. for, for law there is no, num mm. no, at least not at Maastricht University, there's no yeah. numerous fixes. Psychology has a numerous fixes program, but they also have a, a different procedure mm. from the 
from the one we do. Mm -hmm. right. uh, maybe as a quick concluding question, um, if you were to give some piece of advice to prospective students about apply, applying, you know, the mission requirements, what do you think, what, what, what should they do before applying? Yeah. Well, read the information on the website and when you start preparing your application, make sure that you bring across why do you want to study this program, why should we admit you, and why Maastricht, uh, what attracts you here. Uh, you have a chance to communicate with the committee that is going to assess your file, so, so take advantage of that and make sure that you're prepared for what's coming. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Um, yeah, well, I see one more question, maybe a little, <laughs> a, to end on a little funny note. Uh, what was the funniest application story that you can remember? Is there anything that pops yeah. out? <laughs> well, we have one uh, during a, an introduction day mm. where we had someone uh, from abroad who uh, tried to explain to us that she didn't know what something meant. And we spent about 10 minutes trying to figure out what she meant. And she said something like, ye, ni, and we thought, what is she saying? What is she? <laughs> and she meant the yes, no stickers, you know, on the letterbox. <laughs> that she didn't understand oh. what they meant. And we were all, OK, this is about admission or registration. or But she, she just wanted to know what oh, that meant on the letter, uh, letterbox in our house. So oh, that was really funny. We had to recuperate from that. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys really need the patience as well, I guess. Sometimes, but that's part of the job. And we really like to see that uh, in September or February, we have real people coming to Maastricht mm -hmm. and, and starting their program and being enthusiastic. So we like it. Yeah, well, thank you so much for joining us. And well, now yeah. we have a nice little overview about what happens behind the scenes at yeah. the admission office. Do you want to know the number of emails? Or yes, oh, yeah. we yeah. almost yeah. got it. Yes. <laughs> so it, it's about, so it's not only in my personal email account, thank God, mm -hmm. but it's about 80 per day. So okay. yeah. 80 per day. That's deep. Yeah. It's only in SVE, right? Only SVE, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, hey, thanks again for joining You're us. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank um, you. Yeah. Thanks. Um, another topic that uh, usually has uh, a lot of questions that need to be answering are yeah. regard, you know, practical matters like finances, housing, you know, how do we find housing? Mm -hmm. um, to get us started, we have a, a little video clip uh, where uh, we ask students about their housing situation and some of, us, uh, some of them actually show us around a little bit. Uh, so yeah, here's that video uh, to get you more information. I live on the Kapusijnestraat, which is right next to the Drontur Cantina, and it's quite central. I live by Emmaplein. Uh, it's my second like place I live now in Maastricht. I live in uh, close to the station, basically directly opposite the station. Yeah. Hi guys, welcome to the flat. This is where I live with one other person, um, and this is my room. Um, I live in a two-bedroom flat with a friend of mine, and we have a shared kitchen and um, bathroom. I got quite lucky because my flatmate was the one who found this through Facebook, and she knew that the girl that was in this room was going to leave within a month, and so she reached out and asked if I wanted to have it so I could skip all the administrative like Facebook agency stuff and just kind of come straight into a room. Um, some advice I would give uh, is to act fast and to just uh, agree to something in your first year so that you've got somewhere to live. Um, it's best not to be too picky because uh, once you're here, you can always find something better. And once you're here, you'll be able to go to viewings more easily and you'll be able to have a network and find people that you'll be able to live with easily. So I'd say for your first year, you're never going to be like completely satisfied with what you end up with, um, especially if you're coming from abroad. So I'd say just just go for something and you'll you'll make your way up eventually. Hello, this is our house. Welcome. And I like that we have uh, a full house for, for our group. So you feel like you, you really live in a house rather than a room. Um, and since I know everyone in the house, it really feels like we, we own the house and we can move freely in one big space. I found it over social media, Facebook, but I got linked to it through a friend that knew people that lived here. Um, but mostly via the Facebook groups that offer rooms. Um, that's how I started my search and that's how I also found the room. Mm, be, be very open to a lot of things. Um, not, be, not be too picky in the sense that you expect to find the perfect home with a lot of space for the perfect price because there are very beautiful places here um, and you can make everything your 
per little perfect beautiful place um, but it won't happen if you're too too picky and too oh it's 10 minutes away from my university so yeah don't don't limit yourself too much please come into my house welcome i found a studio via a friend that was actually going on exchange herself and she was just giving away her apartment so i just jumped in and i have this really nice uh, studio now i just share the bathroom with the neighbor um, but for the rest I have everything myself and it's really nice I just can have a lot of time alone and I have a big table so I can host big dinners with my friends and just have people around whenever I want which is really nice. In April I started joining all the Facebook groups and I posted that I was looking for a room with someone and then this other girl actually answered me and she was like hey I'm also looking for a place do you want to look for something together and then we can live together I didn't know her at all but I thought it was nice so we met up like in April or May uh, here and we visited some rooms so it was quite early actually um, and we found the apartment and the girls like they just gave it to us immediately so we moved in in, ju in July um, so yeah, via yeah, Facebook mainly and the second room I found through my network with other people well I would say start fast uh, look on facebook i looked early and i managed to like actually find a room quite easily so i think if you start early it's fine and if you have the chance to come for a weekend and just do viewings after viewings you'll be more lucky to get a room because people would like to know the person that's gonna come live with them um and for people that are away like the US or stuff like that, maybe just contact an agency because that can be more reliable than Facebook. But Facebook has great opportunities. Okay, now regarding housing and finances, uh, if you have any more questions, please let us know so we can, uh, like, so they can pop up here and we can answer them. Uh, to start this off, Andrea, can you tell me a little bit how you found your housing situation and how that how that is for you now? Well, I actually moved uh, already three times in Maastricht. Uh, first, the house I got it through the website. It was something, uh, yeah, it's the web website finding uh, a room. And second, I second room I got through the Facebook, and the third one I got it from the agency. Uh, Facebook is really good, I would say, because you don't have to pay extra agency fee and, and registration fee, etc. But it can be really competitive, I think, like Definitely. in one post and there are like 10, 15 people mm. commenting on it that they want the room. And yeah, I, I found it, it can be really hectic. Uh, yeah, with the agency, it was very um, fast. You can get the room really fast, but then, yeah, you need to pay extra for registration and uh, yeah, also website, it was kind of the same. I have to pay a little amount for subscription, I think. Yeah, um, for me, when I first came to Maastricht, I, I was actually a bit late. I came in August, so the, the academic year already starts in September, but I, I came here the, in the middle of uh, August, I think. So, uh, yeah, but I, I got lucky, so I just saw a uh, first house, and yeah, I liked it, so I, I yeah, I uh, contracted with the uh, house lord, but uh, yeah, I hear a lot of stories from my friends that they uh, firstly had uh, problems, some troubles to find a room, and they actually ended up in uh, yeah Airbnb or hotels <laughs> for a few days. Yeah, so I, yeah, I think it's always uh, nice to to look for a housing like two months before or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be, if you really, uh, yeah, get unlocked, then yeah, you, yeah, yeah will be definitely, really bad. I definitely advise people to, um, you know, uh, subscribe to the Facebook groups, um, because mm -hmm. of course, uh, say you can't find something more permanent, uh, lots of students go on exchange yeah. every semester, and then the, their room will be available for a certain amount of time, like four or five, six months you never know mm -hmm. um, so that's always a, an option in case you are running into some problems um, but I definitely suggest just starting early joining the Facebook groups kind of messaging people to say oh like um, I'm start coming to Maastricht like do you know of any like housing possibilities um, did you how was your housing experience finding housing well it was like any housing search it was a lot of hard work and a lot of disappointments. But in the end, I did find some nice things. Okay. Um, so in my experience uh, searching for housing here in Maastricht, um, there's a couple of different avenues. Some people go through Facebook. Personally, I, I was never fast enough to catch up any deals because they go really fast, yeah. like you just said. Um, 
but what I ended up doing is I ended up going with the um, like the websites and stuff like that and mm -hmm. so what I found out is that certain websites uh, they sort of um, they prioritize people who've been on the website mm -hmm. the longest right the longest right. Mm -hmm. so uh, if you are considering moving to Maastricht let's say a nice thing would be already in advance, a couple of months in advance before you even start looking for housing. Let's say you sign up to one of these websites to pay the fee, which is usually like 30 euros, something like that, mm -hmm. so that you already have some time on the website so that you have that advantage. But beyond that, I also, uh, with a couple of websites, I noticed that sometimes when there's one thing, which is, you know, you, you visit the house, but mm -hmm. you go with a group. And right. so it's um, actually like a random lottery of who gets the house. Yeah. Oh, okay. You put your name down. Mm -hmm. So those are some things to take into account because that can lengthen the amount of time it takes to look for housing mm -hmm. but i mean keep in mind it's a student city uh their housing goes pretty quickly so mm -hmm. you really have to have an eye on the situation but people find things yeah yeah, yeah definitely you have to have an eye on that but it's not crazy i would say no yeah, i think other student crazy. cities uh, like yeah. busier cities have uh, bigger housing problems than maastricht so i definitely wouldn't um wouldn't worry about it too much. Yeah. Um, as for price goes, I think uh, most of the kind of, I mean, there's a range of prices that you can find uh, here for housing. Uh, you can find, there's a lot of different options. I mean, there's like a single room in a student house or a shared apartment um, or your own little studio. Um, it's whatever you want, really. Uh, I really chose to live with other people because I think that would kind of help build my social connections and have, um, you know, more company at home, like yeah. people to cook with and to eat with. Um, and so I lived in a shared student house. Um, and yeah, I think prices, uh, different rooms, they range around, I think it can be from 300 euros to, you know, to 500 euros. I think yeah. it's definitely a big range, um, depending what you're looking for. Um, no, yeah, yeah, I agree, actually, a uh, student, ho uh, student house, like a shared house, I think it, it can be messy sometimes mm -hmm. if uh, yeah if the, your housemate doesn't clean uh, something, yeah. but I think I yeah I really enjoy that that kind of environment because I also have really diverse uh, housemates like uh, yeah there was one German uh, one French one Dutch and then we were like cooking together mm -hmm. and then yeah was also I got opportunity to learn like French cuisine and and yeah share food and etc. Right. And also it's nice because, uh, yeah, we are international or can be, you know, can be, okay, there can be people from Maastricht, but not everyone is. And uh, it's nice to have buddies at home when you Definitely. first just moved into a whole new city. And uh, I think it's nice. But Definitely. totally, uh, yeah, if it uh, really depends on the personality, I guess, if you, if you prefer to live alone and cook alone and mm -hmm. if you prefer that, yeah, it's also There's possible options for you, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and as apart from housing, you know, there's a lot of other expenses uh, expenses that um, come from with with starting to study in a new city and living by yourself. I mean, there's tuition fees, uh, grocery like yeah. grocery shopping. Yeah, Can you definitely. tell me how you guys um, kind of and as divide apart from those, housing? You know, um, there's a lot of other expenses, your, like, your budget uh, expenses that, that for you? Um, come from um, with, with okay, starting again, to study in a new city and living by athlete. yourself. Uh, I mean, most of my budget fees. Uh, kind of goes towards food, but I'm also kind of the person who eats out a lot, so that's also kind of why. Mm -hmm. But in general, like um, I budget something like uh, 20 euros lasts me for around like four days of food if okay. I'm being very economical. Uh, but normally, uh, I think most people it's 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 a bit less, and they're able to get out throughout the whole week. But again, I eat a lot. <laughs> um, but otherwise. For other expenses, let's say um, on a week-to-week -week thing, sometimes transportation here. Uh, this is a uh, yeah because I, I I used to study in Belgium mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. when I was doing my high school, and one thing that was really nice over there is that uh, with the buses you just beep your card once and then you mm -hmm. don't have like a, a, a how do you say like a, a check-in check-out exactly. Okay. Whereas here they sort of they calculate how much you pay based on where you got on yeah. and where you get off. Mm -hmm. So to all the homies in Belgium, keep that in mind. <laughs> No, but um, actually, I don't know, living in this city, Maastricht, it's, it's not that big, I would say. No. So you don't really need bus. No. Definitely in this, uh, in this city, but yeah, of course, you need train to go to other cities. But in Maastricht, uh, you can reach everywhere with bike. So Yeah, you can walk everywhere or yeah. bike anywhere. Um, it's, a really, it's a small, cozy city. Um, and uh, something I actually really love about Maastricht is that our campuses um, are... Uh, apart from the FHML, the, the science faculty, um, 
on the other side of the river. All the other campuses are uh, in, in and around the, the inner city. Um, so we call it like our inner city campus, although it's like many different buildings across um, the city. Um, but you can easily walk or bike to, to each of them. Um, uh, how about uh, like tuition fees? Um, I know Maastricht has the option to, um, to pay it all at once in one go or split through different months. Uh, what works best for you guys? How do you handle that? Um, yeah, the first year I, I paid all uh, lump sum, I would yeah. say. And uh, I think second year also and third year yeah, doing inst installments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's not much difference. Only uh, administration cost, okay. about like a two twenty-four euro or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think uh, my tuition fee is also different than you guys. I think. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, then students really need to check for the requirements for institutional fees and Definitely. statutory fees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it can be a different whole different cost. Mm -hmm. I think per month. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you need um, any specific information regarding um, tuition costs, because um, they differ per bachelor's program, mm -hmm. um, and also um, it, it differs whether you're an international student um, and just where you're from, it differs. Um, so make sure to check the website under those specific uh, bachelor programs for that information. It should all be online. Um, now, as for um, uh, kind of... The, talking about money in, in Maastricht and having being a student and you know going out to eat, ordering food, uh, cooking. Um, do you guys have a little job on the side, or is it possible to work as a student uh, in Maastricht? Definitely, I would say so. If you uh, how do you say if you organize yourself a bit better, of course, study is demanding, but you don't you're not occupied like seven days a week. Uh, I I have experience working in clothing store once. And also, um, yeah, part-time working as a student ambassador. So also side job from mm -hmm. university. And I've also uh, done like a freelancing job, like uh, for actually Korean uh, corporation, uh, like <coughs> um, majorly uh, translating works and something like that. So yeah, then you can kind of choose when to work and yeah, when to go out and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely it, it's possible. And uh, yeah, by the time uh, when I studied Oh, sorry. Uh, when I worked in a clothing store, well, I didn't really speak Dutch and I mm. really didn't have any problem working here. So also, yeah, knowing, not speaking Dutch is not really a problem to get a, a part time job here. Yeah, yeah. It's um, I also have I also work as a student ambassador. I mean, we all do. Um, and that's definitely a really great way to get involved into your like your faculty, um, meet new people from other mm -hmm. faculties, but also just have some uh, flexibility in when you want to work um, yeah. and things like that. Um, and I know some of my other friends, they work at hotels here and little restaurants. Um, and because uh, of you, you, you get to know your schedule each two weeks before your period starts. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're, it's quite easy to kind of schedule your work time um, with your classes and, and, you know, contact hours. Yeah, the uh, thing is that you don't really need to be present at the university that much. At least in law faculty, mm -hmm. like I spent like mm, eight to ten hours I actually have to be present at the university. So the rest time is just for the self-study and for the work. So I think it's one of the good things, but yeah. Okay. Sports culture. <laughs> okay, yeah, so we're taking a couple questions right now. <laughs> and uh, there's one question which asks, is there a sports culture in Maastricht? Um, well, it really depends. It depends really what you're into. Um, I mean, I come from a background where like, I'm involved in a bunch of sports. Um, but I know that there's a big um, rugby scene. The team's pretty active. People know the Mahaboos, I think that's what they're called. Um, then, of course, there's a basketball team. I mean, if you go to UM Sports, um, in Maastricht, that's sort of like the university affiliated sports center and gym. Um, and so there's a bunch of things you can undertake. Um, personally, in my experience, like I'm, I'm a cheerleader at the University of Maastricht, and there's a pretty big culture around that, at least within the team. Like we go around the parks and like we, we do some stunts and stuff like that in the summer. So I'd say it really depends on what sport you're looking at. I mean, maybe there are some sports which are a bit more, let's say, not confined, but like more out of sight, but you have to like go there to know what it's about. But in general, I'd say there is quite a sports culture. You just have to know what you want. Yeah, so that's kind of 
uh, introduces a topic of student life, you know, social life, hobbies, things like that. Um, so we'll do um, a little bit uh, more in depth uh, right after this video that we have to show you, uh, kind of introducing the student life in Maastricht, um, all the hobbies and things like that. Um, so yeah, here is that video. When I go out for a run, it only takes me 10 minutes to just be away from the whole city and just be in nature and just completely forget about city life. My name is Brian Megans. I'm 25 years old. I'm uh, currently studying the European Studies Bachelor. Although I don't even live for two years in Maastricht, I really see it as my, my new home. I really like the city, the, the atmosphere, it's also small, historical, uh, so it was an easy decision for me to choose Maastricht. Something I think is great is that their facilities are spread all across the cities, so you also get more in touch with the city. I'm also working for the university as a social media reporter, uh, which means that I'm responsible for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram posts. For the student city of Maastricht itself is that they have of course good bars, but also the, the, the combination of locals and students and how they interact. What I like most is its international students and also how the university welcomes them, but also prepare them a bit for life in the Netherlands. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that little video about student life in Maastricht. Uh, Andrea, can you maybe tell me something about you, what you're involved in Maastricht um, and what you do outside of school? Uh, I would say, well, still inside the law faculty, but I'm currently in a study association. Uh, in law faculty, we have two big study associations, which is Uranus and Elsa. Uh, yeah, there I'm in uh, academic committee. Uh, we organize something like uh, court visiting and law firm visiting and we, well next month we are going to, how do you say, like high court, like Hoge Raad from, uh, in Nederland, so something like, yeah, court visiting session and we also organize uh, lectures. Uh, we, one time we actually visited, um, well, it's like a jail, yeah, like, the, yeah. yeah prison. Yeah, and uh, stuff like that. And we also have trip committee, social committee. We organize uh, campus. We organize gala, like trip to US and ski trip or something like that. So actually, uh, it's a whole package, I would say. It's, mm -hmm. You have a lot of fun there with your low fellow students. And you also do something productive, like uh, yeah, academic events, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. UCM actually has kind of the same um, same uh, situation, we also have a, a, a study association called Universalis uh, and we have an academic council at UCM as well. Um, and pretty much we have, uh, I think, about 25 committees at UCM, uh, which you guys can, can join uh, if you want to go to UCM. There's like the th musical theater committee, uh, sports committee, um, you know, soccer on the weekends. Um, uh, poetry nights and UCM organizes a lot of little parties like um, like a jam night or an open mic night where students come and perf like perform it's like a little talent show um, and uh, Universalis also organizes uh, lots of uh, like little parties uh, like a disco night um, where you have to buy tickets for and things like that so um, as for social life regarding your study uh, you can get as as involved into the study associations um, as you as you please. There's plenty of events um, that are hosted by uh, those faculties and by the um, 
university in general, which you can attend and have fun, uh, have, have fun out, have fun at. Um, what about uh, going out? That's where I got confused there. Um, do you guys ever go out in Maastricht uh, to have some drinks or go to parties? Do you guys know what that's like? I normally go to house parties normally, and since we don't have many clubs here, and yeah, with my fellow friends uh, in associations, we go to bars, mm. kind of like a disco bar, okay. I guess. Yeah, but not much to clubs, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in my experience, like, um, I was also like part of a study association, and our big thing was we'd hold karaoke nights um, and so that's always very fun everyone gets a little tipsy and starts singing and that's really beautiful especially when you start singing about the Lion King that's but yeah I mean the the, the nightlife here it's, it's pretty nice it's very I'd say it's oriented more towards like bars and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah there are two clubs in the city two or three I'm not sure but um, yeah yeah, again, uh, it's, it's what you kind of make out of it, uh, mm -hmm. because there's plenty of, uh, of uh, like student bars uh, in Maastricht, um, plenty of places, uh, there's one street called the Patilstraat, it is the, the kind of the street where students go out, uh, you can, it kind of has this like bar hopping scene where you go from one to the next, um, uh, but there's also bigger party places like complex, things like this, um, but again, it's what you make out of it um, yourself. You just get a fun group together and, and go have fun. Um. Yeah, actually, yeah, I, I actually saw one question about income. It's like mm -hmm. in regard to the party. Uh, yeah, one audience asked uh, yeah, something about uh, should, I, should I go to income? It's like income is like the, the festival for like one week right before the start of the academic year. And the whole city just turns into a party city. And you can you can choose to drink from from actually uh, from the day, or you, you don't need to. Uh, but yeah, I guess uh, a lot of DJs also come, and we mm. have like a whole party in our big squares, and it's really fun, and it's really uh, a great way to meet your fellow students. Yeah, normally, yeah. yeah, I see a lot of cases that friends actually stick together in in later years. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. friends you met uh, during income. So income is really useful and really helpful. Yeah, for your it's life. it's it, my income was really really fun. Yeah, um, it's pretty much the introduction week of mm -hmm. uh, both the uh, Maastricht University students, but also the Hogeschool uh, South students. Yeah. Um, and so uh, these income groups are formed, uh, which and you get like a, a mom and a dad. Uh, or two moms, two dads, kind of your your mentors uh, yeah. in the during the week, um, and the the program. Uh, I mean, the people in the in your group are completely mixed. So you have students from the law faculty, from SBE, but they're all uh, your your year. So kind of your your st fellow students that are also entering uh, Maastricht University at that time. Um, it's also good for uh, to to meet. Uh, student associations mm. they're a bit different and yeah the all, all kind of uh, stu uh, student associations are out there and income so if you're interested in like more advanced party life mm -hmm. or something then the student association can be a good idea yeah, and it's a great way to meet those uh, student associations yeah yeah um, yeah so we have the the kind of more traditional Dutch student associations that are present at income but also lots of the sports associations are have their stands and things like that um, for example uh, I'm part of the field hockey team at the student club in Maastricht um, and I kind of reached out to them during the income and said, oh, like, I would like to maybe hang out with you guys for a day and uh, see if I would maybe like to join the team. And so I did that um, and really enjoyed it. So I decided to join uh, the team. And that's a great way for me now to kind of, like, reach out uh, to other people outside of UCM and outside of my kind of in -group, in income group that I made. Um, and lots of my friends from income I actually still am in contact with. Uh, there's a yeah. um, girl from FHML and a girl from UC that I met from UCM and someone from SBE. Um, and through those connections now, uh, like say I'm invited to go to like to have dinner at someone's house or go to a different um, house party. It's, it's via those people because they're not on my faculty. I, I don't know their friends, but like getting to know them, I, I get to know others, others as well. So yeah. that's a great way to, uh, to make friends in Maastricht for sure. Yeah, and uh, during the income, I, I actually joined a student association when I was first year. So, yeah, it was a really nice experience. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Somehow my association was very Dutch. Mm -hmm. Also a good way to know Dutch culture. Mm -hmm. For say. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Shall we answer a question, maybe? Yeah. Um, sure. So yeah, they asked, are there any cultural events uh, happening in Maastricht? So there's really, I'd say there's a bunch. Um, one of the things that they talk about often in, in relation to Maastricht is the European Fine Arts uh, Festival, mm -hmm. I think. I don't know when it happens, but it's a big deal. Um, and a lot of people fly from all over the world just to attend this festival. There's some very nice paintings, sculptures, whatever you want. It's at the Mech, which is sort of on the other side of the river. But it's not only limited to that. Um, we have a lot of things that are like going on here. We have a lot of again societies and clubs that organize things. Um, th uh, yeah, there's like there's something for everyone. That's what I feel. Uh, like if you're into like alternative things, there's like the LBB that can cater to you. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, like any real um, study association has their theme nights and stuff. Also, a very big thing is carnival here. It's coming up soon. That's right. Yeah. Um, but would you like to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Uh, Carnival is just pretty much uh, where everyone in, in Maastricht um, and uh, kind of the surrounding uh, cities and provinces, uh, they celebrate Carnival. Um, and it's kind of just a big party, lots of old mm -hmm. kind of uh, mu music from, from Maastricht uh, and you kind of dance and people dress up. Um, and uh, Maastricht University students get off uh, about, I uh, think One we're week. free for a week, right? Yeah. Um, which is different to uh, kind of universities in other parts of the Definitely. Netherlands. So it's definitely, definitely plus. Uh, some people t take that holiday to celebrate Carnival here um, in Maastricht, but also it gives you a great opportunity to travel because yeah. Maastricht is such a centrally like located um, city in Europe. Um, you have many opportunities to visit other other countries and cities around around Maastricht. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. Shall we answer another question? Yeah, I see. Uh, does UM offer foreign language courses? Yes, we do. We have courses German, French, English also even, uh, Dutch definitely, and Chinese, and Japanese, I'm not sure. I, I'm sorry if I, I, I think it was Russian too. There's oh Russian yeah, Russian. Well. And yeah. Spanish too. Yeah, yeah, so lots like of that. options. Yeah. Um, at UCM, for example, um, you are able to take um, a language course, if you please, as one of your skill courses instead of something else. So it's a longer period of time which you take the language as a skill course. Mm -hmm. um, but for other studies, you are just free to sign up. Um, like I said, the Dutch is uh, usually free in the, the first year. Um, but then afterwards, I think the language courses do require a, a yeah, small I think registration only fee. One course, like the basic courses, is free of charge. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is the average age of bachelor students? Is there an <laughs> age limit? Yeah, we don't have age limits. And in my faculty, I, I also, yeah, I tend to see people like 26, 27. It's not uncommon. And mm -hmm. yeah, it can be that you do um, like, yeah, second bachelor. A lot of people do second bachelor. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it can vary from 18 to 26. Yeah. 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 And of course, there's a lot of people who decide to take gap years, oh, yeah. um, things yeah. like that. So um, yeah, age, I, don't, I wouldn't consider mm -hmm. age a big, big factor when Not talking about all. making friends and having a social life in Maastricht. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. next question. I see uh, you have a cheerleading I question. I do, I do. I'm very happy about this. Uh, is cheerleading and studying doable in terms of workload? Well, um, it really depends uh, on you, I would say. Uh, at the, and the cheer team here in Maastricht, we sort of have two divisions, so to speak. We have the junior cheer team. Well, not the junior. We call them SMOED. Um, and so there, the focus is more on like a six-minute routine, uh, whereas we also have the co-ed cheer team, which is more like competing like at um, Europeans and those kind of things. So it's more the real competitive cheer, which is a two minute, 30 uh, second routine. Anyways, that's the distinction. But the point is um, you can be on uh, the, the junior team and manager work, like studying. And I know even some people work. And you can also be on the senior team and also manage like studying and work. Personally, myself, I was working during that time. Uh, and then every now and then I I'll hop back in to help in. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it's. I think it's totally doable, and I strongly encourage you to join cheerleading because it's not that big in Europe, except Germany. But you should definitely join it. Well, it goes for any sport, right? Whatever you're interested in, um, whatever you would like to join, uh, whatever like um, 
uh, commission or anything uh, like that, what, anything you would like to do in Maastricht, uh, you make time for it yourself and you definitely have the time um, uh, like aside from your study. Um, so there's plenty of options to get involved. Um, during the intake uh, and intro days, uh, you have uh, various committee fairs and things like that where there will be a representative talking from the nonprofit organization or from the student club or uh, whatever you're interested in. Uh, you can go there. It's usually at the Student Service Center um, and it's also everywhere during the income. Um, so you can go there and just ask any questions about joining or kind of the application procedure, whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, let's let's answer maybe one more question and um, um, wrap up afterwards. Maybe what are the vacation and exam periods like? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Maybe it's different because you guys have the, the reflection, reflection week. week right. but we don't have that in FA or some courses do. I'm not sure. But I know that in general we do have like two major, two or three major holiday periods mm -hmm. in general. Yeah. There's like the December break and then the summer break, I think. Um, and I have to double check how long the each carnival one of them break. Is. And the carnival well, break. Yeah, yes. carnival, of course. That's true. That's um, true. Yeah, but no, definitely nice holidays. Um, I think we have two weeks for Christmas mm -hmm. um, and I think around. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. A bit under two months, maybe, for a summer holiday. So plenty of um, um, of time. Um, ooh, that's a long question. Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, just to wrap up, why would you recommend um, Maastricht University to any prospective student uh, that's looking at it? I would say it can be really, yeah, personal. But, yeah, I think Maastricht University uh, offers really a unique program, which is what I'm studying and I really enjoy it. Uh, and other than that, if you really like this international vibe, uh, if you want to, yeah, a lot of people uh, they are trying to work in, uh, in international organizations or something like that. So I think, yeah, definitely the study options and the vibe. I would say the young and energetic vibe. Definitely. What yeah, about you? Do, you do you share the same? Opinion? I would I would certainly share the same opinion, um, and I'd say that Maastricht is one of these uh, European universities which has a strong link to the European Union, um, and there's a lot of our alumni who work within uh, European institutions, and so mm -hmm. if that's maybe um, a direction you're thinking of heading, it might be a good idea to come study here. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, I also really like Maastricht for the student life. Um, I, I really, again, like there's a cheerleading team here, which there's not that much, again, in Europe, so I'm very happy about that. Um, and beyond that, I also think that the city is pretty lovely. Um, yeah. It's really nice to uh, be outside in the cafe studying mm -hmm. when there is some nice weather. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But also when there's not so nice weather, it's also nice to be inside, shielded from the elements. Definitely. But strongly yeah. recommend yeah. studying in Moscow. Definitely. Um, yeah, so Maastricht is super international, you know, we have um, like great teaching methods, you know, PBL, uh, kind of the international community within, with, with, even within your tutorial groups. Mm -hmm. um, the city uh, is great, it's small, cozy, but there's plenty, plenty to do, loads of things to get involved in. Uh, again, it's what you make out of it. So if you are interested in um, in a bachelor's program here in Maastricht, I would definitely suggest just going online and looking at specific admission requirements, like certain aspects of the program. Um, but also on the website, on, on, the, on the internet, there's loads of information about like student associations and clubs you can join and ways you can get involved here in Maastricht. Um, but if you have any specific questions that you cannot find the answer to, uh, feel free to contact the Student Service Center um, with the email study at maastrichtuniversity.nl. Um, yeah, so with that, I'd like to say thank you so much for, for watching, for paying attention to us. <laughs> I, hope you, I hope that we could uh, answer as many questions as possible. Um, so yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.